So lately I've been comparing mouthpieces from signature principal trombonist mouthpieces. But I also realized I have this lineup up here of really interesting shapes and designs for mouthpieces. So we're going to explore what some of those design concepts do. And we're going to use the second trombone part to um, Hungarian march to kind of hear the difference in what they do. First I'll do a quick introduction of the mouthpieces. Here we have a Greg Black Futuro mouthpiece custom design from um, Rich Wallace that I bought from him. It's kind of a skeletonized approach. Uh, it doesn't have the mass that you typically see on a great black mouthpiece. It's a cool design. Very neat bell looking shape. Then we have the Christian Lindbergh CL4 mouthpiece. This mouthpiece is one of the more, just looks like a giant triangle, like a little pyramid or something. Very cool design. Uh, there's very little anything on this. It's just a really, really seamless, solid one piece, which distinguishes it from a lot of other mouthpieces that you see on the market. Then we have the Eli Brass Sasha Romero mouthpiece, which I've used before in some of them, and I just think that it's such a cool design that I want to compare it to other interesting looking designs. Next up we have a Ferguson. What is this? A Ferguson 2 mouthpiece. It has this really interesting mix of a V and a cup design. It's pretty unique in its taper here. More often you see more of a straight line and then a bend down or more of a direct V like the Lindbergh mouthpiece. This kind of splits the difference. We also have a Griego Deco mouthpiece which is the most like bowl shaped mouthpiece that I own. I actually used this for a little while uh, when I was doing my first big mouthpiece search. I think it does some really nice things to the sound but the endings of notes always felt a little harder for me. We'll see if that still reads when I do these videos. And finally we have the classic Bach Megatone. This is a, what is this, a 4G Bach Megatone. It's heavy as anything. It's got a decently sized rim. Uh, Alexei Lobakov uses one of these. I think he won first prize in the Tchaikovsky competition back in 2019. So I got one to kind of fool around with it and see what it was like. So that's the introduction. Uh, for a sample comparison, I'm going to use the mouthpiece I've been using almost every day since I got it. This is Doug Elliott mouthpiece. XT104 rim, G cup, G shank, G8 shank. That's the mouthpiece I've been using, kind of the sound concept I've been after lately. Let's see how that starts to compare. We'll first start with the Greg Black Futuro Rim. F Futuro? Futuro? I'm not really sure. <laughs> kind of hard to center this immediately at the louder dynamics. It feels like it wants to pull towards other partials really easily. And um, for the low notes, it feels like um, the sound gets just a little tight, a little nasally. Yeah. And that might have to do with the lack of mass, the skeletonized aspect of it. I found in the past that this can work really well in soft excerpts, but for the loud stuff, when you really want to push some air through it, it does some weird things. Then we have the CL4, Christian Lindbergh mouthpiece. Let's see how this does on some standard orchestral fare. 
takes a lot of airs and my breathing changed quite quite a lot from other aspects of the playing which was super interesting and I also noticed I think that when I listen back my intonation on high E's might be a little wobbly from E to E um, I think that this mouthpiece really wants a very focused very centered very like everything is always in the same place every single time approach and a lot of air in a big space Next up we have the Sasha Romero, first generation piece with I think a 285 throat on it, so a slightly larger throat than normal I believe. Let's see how this stacks up. <laughs> Yeah, this starts to feel much more like the American standard orchestral style of playing and like kind of the length of sound, it's getting more towards the industry standard. Uh, then we have a Ferguson tune mouthpiece. player's idea over an orchestral mouthpiece. It has a little bit of that wider sound, but it still has a pretty instant pop and front to it that I think would register pretty well on a microphone. Then we have the Griego Deco 5, which as I mentioned in the introduction was a mouthpiece that was almost my daily use mouthpiece for a couple of months while I was figuring out what I was looking for in a mouthpiece. Let's see how this one goes. for orchestral playing especially articulate orchestral playing I think I remember I ended up moving away from this because the ends of notes and the transitions between the notes were maybe a little bit more slotty and jumpy than I normally like as more of a solo chamber lyrical musician that's what I try to be anyway and then finally we have the Bach 4G mouthpiece the megatone which uh, if you can kind of compare them side by side with the Elliot. You can see like just the difference in just how much extra mass is on these things. It's really kind of a funny, funny mouthpiece design. 
let's see how the Megatone does, if it really, you know, does what it says it does on Hungarian March. <laughs> Yeah, this really does add a lot of length, and it's ah, pleasantly surprising to remember how this mouthpiece feels in the face. It feels really nice to play this style of orchestral excerpt on. I think from the feedback I got from it, I'd have to remember to keep my air going extra strong through the small notes, basically through all the eighth notes. But I think that for the longer notes especially, it really does add a nice little depth of sound. All right, so that was a quick look at these interestingly shaped mouthpieces. Uh, if you have any questions or if you liked one more than all the others, please let me know. And thanks for listening.